The second step in completing the Simulation Express Wizard is to apply external loads to the part. Here, you can apply either a force, a pressure, or both. Again, an assumption you must keep in mind in Express is that you can only apply loads to faces, and these loads must be uniformly distributed. For example, pressure inside of a tank or force between two stiff boxy components is uniformly distributed. In the full versions of simulation, you have the option to choose from a handful of predefined non-uniform load distributions, such as a bearing load. It also lets you define non-uniform loading using your own equations, or simply have two parts push against each other and let SOLIDWORKS figure out how the loads are distributed for you. Also, many parts get loaded by acceleration, gravity, spinning, or changing temperatures. The full version of simulation is required to account for these effects. In this example, a bearing load distribution would be ideal to more accurately describe the loading between the pin and the control arm. This would give me more reliable results in the rod end itself, but since I'm mainly concerned about bending in the body of the arm, a force load will suffice to appropriately test my design and identify any weak areas. To apply the force, I can click the Add Force button in the task pane to bring up the Force Property Manager. Or, keep in mind you can always access the same commands by right-clicking in the study tree. I can right-click the external loads item and select Force here as well. All I have to do here is select the face or faces where the force should be applied. Before I do, remember the note in the original problem statement that said the load would be applied by a shaft that passes through the small cylindrical hull and it will be pushing up on it. To account for this, I only want the force to be applied to the upper half of the cylindrical face. To do this, I've used a split line feature in SOLIDWORKS to make just the upper half of it selectable. If the face weren't split, then the applied force would pull the bottom of the hole in addition to pushing the top of the hole. For more explanation on how to create a split line feature, see the split line lesson in the appendix. I'll click on the top face of the hole to continue. The arrows that appear indicate that the force is being applied normal to the cylindrical face. In this case, we want the force to be pushing in a single direction, up on the face. In the property manager, I'll use the selected direction option instead. Here, I can use a reference plane or a face of the model to tell SOLIDWORKS the direction for the force. I'll select the top reference plane. Pay close attention to the preview arrows. These indicate what direction Express will apply the force. If they're pointing in the wrong direction, you can click the reverse direction checkbox to flip it. The problem stated that there will be a 4,000 Newton force pushing up on the part. I'll go ahead and type 4,000 into the force box here. Now, there's an option I skipped over here that you should know about. Notice the Per Item and Total options. With the Per Item option, SOLIDWORKS would apply the 4000 Newton load to each face I had selected. If, for instance, if I selected the top and bottom faces of the hole, the Per Item option would actually result in a total force of 8000 Newtons, 4000 per item. With the Total option selected, SOLIDWORKS would only apply 4000 Newtons total, and distribute the force evenly to each face. In this case, we're only interested in applying the force to the single top face, so these options won't have an effect here, but it is something you should keep in mind when you apply a force to multiple faces. At this point, I'll click the green check, and the load is added in the simulation tree. Just as you saw earlier with fixtures, in the task pane, you can add more force or pressure load sets, or edit an existing force or pressure but I recommend getting comfortable interacting with the study tree to perform these same functions, as this is how you'll interact with the interface in the full version of simulation. You can add additional force or pressure sets by right-clicking on external loads, or you can edit an existing load by right-clicking and selecting Edit Definition. I only need the single load here, so I'll click Next in the wizard to proceed.